On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1990. We're going to be taking a look at Mariah Carey, and she's going to be performing Vision of Love. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So the performance for tonight is going to be a short one. It's about three and a half minutes in length. So we're going to watch it the whole way through and then jump into the analysis after. As always, there's a link in the description below in case you guys want to watch it multiple times, but we'll jump into it. We're going to have the pitch monitoring software up on screen as well for analysis purposes. Let's jump into it and see how Mariah gets on. And there we have it. Well, first of all, I mean, Mariah Carey just has one of those voices that you know instantly. Just amazing technical ability and range. And there's so much in this performance that you can dig into. And believe it or not, we are going to bust the guitar out to demonstrate some of the things that Mariah does with her voice. Because unlike a lot of other singers, she doesn't hold on to notes for a long period of time and then, you know, apply vibrato. Uh, she does apply vibrato and this is the thing that she's got all the technique that you would want to hear. Like when she does hold on to a note for any length of time, 
she's obviously got that ability, but artistically, she likes to go for complicated runs and you know, trills occasionally as well, just, you know, peddling between two notes. But then, yeah, these elaborate runs that she can do because of her range. She's just got an insane range. And we do have the piano up on screen, so we can reference some of these notes. I've taken it all the way back to the beginning because the opening vocal run that we have actually goes all the way down to an E flat three, which is the same as a D sharp three. But let's have a listen. And you can see on the pitch monitoring software that we're in around F3 here and it's gonna go down to that E flat, D sharp. So going over to the piano, we can see that our D3 would be here, the E3 is here. So it means that E flat is gonna be the same as the D sharp. So it's this note. And the F3 you can see as the bottom end of the contralto range, it means that Mariah is way down there in terms of female vocal ranges and you're going to want to just log this in <laughs> to your memory at this point for where we go with the rest of the performance and the heights that we reach. The other thing to listen out for is Mariah's tone, the body that she gets down there, similar to a video we did recently on Luther Vandross. When he went into his lower register, he just got this really full bodied sound and you get that with Mariah when she's all the way down there it doesn't become weak so we'll have a listen to Mariah now at the top end of her chest voice and just listen to the way that she leans into it And it is such a unique sound and it's got so much expression in there. It's interesting that Mariah, I mean, she belts that out to begin with. You can see we're, we're actually around C5 here. And when she's going up to the E5, she actually does a little flip up to it twice, but she's still in chest voice. She isn't releasing this into her head voice. And you can see with her body language, the way that she's leaning into it and she's actually moving her arm to get her up to those notes. Obviously it's the vocal cords that are doing it, but you can tell that she's still in that chest voice. She's still leaning on her diaphragm because of the amount of power that she's got there. The and by keeping it in chest voice, it gives us a really good idea of where Mariah's chest voice sits and where she can belt and the point at which she'll then start to hand over or hand off to her head voice. And just to put that in context, when we go back to what we were just talking about, these notes of the D sharp three, and now we're hitting in chest voice, and that was in chest voice, two octaves higher. And I always say that just having one octave in a performance is great. It will take you on an emotional journey. But Mariah's just got range for days. <laughs> I mean, she can take her melody wherever she wants to. Obviously, the same rules apply to her voice as everybody else's voice. So it means that her chest voice will get to a certain point where she then has to hand it off to head voice. And her head voice will get to a certain point where she then has to hand it off to whistle voice or whistle register, which she does in this song as well. We're going to jump into it again. And there is so much going on here. <laughs> so many things to point out. I mean, first of which is look at the vocal lines that we can see on screen because this is Mariah's isolated vocal, which I have put through the pitch monitoring software. And I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of the band so that we can hear her voice just by itself. Listen to this next vocal phrase and just the range that she's covering, but also where she does hand off to head voice. Have a listen. The weight on my own had to be so and that was a C5. So it meant that Mariah was handing this off to head voice. She didn't hit it in chest voice, but we already know that a C5 she can hit in chest voice. It's this variation in dynamic delivery that she has that 
achieves a different expression by hitting a note in a head voice it's going to sound a lot cleaner and lighter than belting out and chest voice when you want to go for a little bit more emotion in there and that's why you know back in the 60s with you know Motown all of the producers were pushing the singers to belt at the top end of their chest register because that's where all of the emotion is pretty much the higher you can get a vocalist to sing in their chest voice and still get the notes that's the most emotion you're gonna feel because it is really similar to shouting that's why it's called belting it's the closest that you're gonna get but obviously you are still singing now let's have a listen to mariah handing off to head voice with a higher note so it meant that she went to that lighter head voice for a note that she could get in chest voice but this next note i don't think she can get in chest voice it's a bit too high so she just flips into that head voice and just hear the way that she gets up to the g5 i believe in head voice previously again yeah belting it out at the e5 so she could take her chest voice so high and then when she just wants to get that little bit higher she's got that ability to just let it go into head voice and interestingly she still kept a little bit of the body in there it was almost like a hint of mix in there tiny bit of chest voice but most of it was head voice let's have another listen to that Yeah, definitely just handing it off to head voice, but then coming back into chest. And a great example there of these vocal lines that we're getting just being all over <laughs> the pitch graph, just going all the way down with her runs. And this is something that is just unique to Mariah's voice and the way that she is as an artist something that i want to relate this video to is one that i did recently where i explained about trying to sing through your guitar and any notes that you're singing in your head you should be able to just play them and get them to sing and this is a great example of a great vocalist who's just naturally picking out all of these notes and she's not reading them from a sheet of paper She's just going where she wants to and very much the same thing, exactly the same thing as I was explaining with that video of being able to play through your guitar, all of the notes that you've got going on in your head. All of the great vocalists, <laughs> I mean every vocalist ever, has never had to read their notes from a page, they just do it naturally. And we are going to bust out the guitar because I want to show you a few things about Mariah's melody that she goes through here but just her choices the notes that she goes to the way that she executes them and how you can actually learn something from Mariah's performance here just before we jump into the guitar we'll have a listen to Mariah's whistle voice and I do have a video on Minnie Ripperton by the way you can check that out independently if you want to that is somebody that Mariah has cited as an influence for her and an inspiration for her whistle voice but anyway let's have a listen and you can hear that Mariah's still got total control of her whistle register she's got control of all of her registers but she's applying vibrato here we have a little run down so she's still got all of the technique in there g6 by the way up to it looks like we're hitting a B6, maybe C7 in there. Let's have a little look over to our piano because you can see <laughs> the top end of the soprano range C6, but I just said C7. So it means that we need to jump an octave higher to get to this whistle register note that we've got going on. When we think back to the range that we started with, or at least the notes that we started with, in the very first vocal that we heard we go all the way down to you know pretty much the whole piano we've got going on here but it's such a wide range and that was the d sharp four by the way that we started with so let's have a look at what mariah's doing with her voice and how we can relate it to playing lead guitar because playing lead guitar is exactly the same as having a lead vocal you've got that focal point and 
it's going to be taking on a journey and a melody over the top of the chords in the background. And if you are struggling to come up with lead lines, just have a go at copying a great vocalist and just see what they do. And you can then start applying the notes that they're hitting to the shapes that you might already know. You can say, right, what do the great vocalists have whenever they hold a note? they've pretty much always got an even vibrato. So with your guitar, you want to make sure, I'll just kind of put the key in there of C, so that when we go like that, you want to try and you know, get your vibrato nice and even like a voice, or all of the voices that we've analyzed pretty much. Very rarely do you have a note that's going and a vocalist will just hit it really straight. Sometimes a vocalist will go, they'll have a very fast vibrato, but again, it's still a vibrato, even if it's a lot faster and even you know, really subtle, it's still in there. So you want to apply that to your playing. Give your guitar a voice, make the notes sing. So straight away, we've got this and by the way, you can jump into major pentatonic shape one here. Those are the notes that we're going to be playing around with. And pretty much if you use that as your base, your notes, your shape to go to, you can start adding in the other notes that Mariah is going to start throwing in. But you can start throwing those into your lead. Whenever you go to, you know, major pentatonic shape one or minor pentatonic shape one, just remember where these notes are and you can start putting them in all over the place if you want to. So we had this and notice how she went a bit bluesy there. She didn't go and go up a tone. She went and when I say bluesy, I mean that she's going to the minor shape or the minor scale effectively because if I go like that. That's going to be the minor pentatonic. And by the way, when you're playing in your major pentatonic shape, the minor pentatonic is just one, two, three frets up. So you can play exactly what you've just played and you'll get the minor version of it. So if I went three frets higher. That's the minor version. And what you'll notice is Mariah does what pretty much, you know, every great blues vocalist does, but also blues guitarist or guitarists do <laughs> when they start blending major and minor keys. And this is a great place to start knowing that they're just three frets apart in this one shape, because then you can start to chop and change between them. And this is the thing about Mariah's voice is she's got the ability to change between notes really quickly because of the flexibility that she has in her vocal cords. So it means that that, that kind of thing, you know, is possible for her. And you'll hear that kind of thing where, you know, the notes follow on really quickly. So you can apply this to your guitar. As you can hear when I'm playing this, you know, it sounds cool doing these, these little pull-offs and going back to major, going up, you can even do a slide there instead. So having that instead of going, you know, straight, little slide up there and the other part of the melody, just sliding. Because that's effectively what Mariah's doing with her voice. So you get these little bits of expression that you can put at the end of your lines when you're playing these on guitar. Obviously, if you can sing, you can have a go at doing it with your voice as well. But it adds so much, you know, just having a phrase there that you can end with rather than, you know, and just playing the vibrato. Or you can do both. Kind of like that. Yeah, and you'll find that all of these little, 
you know, you, you'll find it bleeding into your playing, which is great because you want to have that kind of spontaneity in your playing the same way that a vocalist is spontaneous when they're coming up with these melodies and effectively extemporizing with their voice. I just want to point out something about this middle eight as well too give you an appreciation of what Mariah is doing when she's just throwing in these little ad-libs and tail off lines at the end of vocal phrases. There. She had So she's actually changing the notes that she's singing again this is all natural she's not reading this she's naturally now singing this b flat but the actual notes from it with the little tail off line that she had we had you know, major scale there so it's effectively like playing lead guitar but with her voice and playing with the chords so when the chords are changing she's changing the notes that she's singing i mean it's really subtle she does keep a lot of it in c of course but it just goes to show that it's such a natural process that she hasn't learned any scales she hasn't had to look this up she's not singing different modes i mean technically yes she is changing from one scale to the next but there's no reading, there's, there's no planning going on, it's just something that's naturally happening in her head. She's just gone to that little tail off with her voice and it's so instinctive, it's so spontaneous, it's so natural that you get to appreciate it on an artistic level but also just as a viewer, somebody just enjoying music, just listening to a singer in full flow, there's a lot more that's required in order to get your voice through a guitar or through any instrument but you can start to take inspiration from the great singers and just emulate or copy what they're doing with their voice on your guitar and it will leave you in such a great place in order to then apply it to your own voice and how you want to sound while you play the instrument. But thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. As always, keep those requests coming in the comments section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!